Hi everyone, it's Alina from Estimate Mastery here, and today we're going to talk about estimate organization. So trying to keep all of your project lists organized, there's several different thoughts on how to do this, um, but there's a way to mark your estimate as complete and then you never have to look at those estimates again, and it's a pretty sweet deal. So we're going to take a look at that today, and let's go take a look. There are a couple of different ways that you can organize your project here in Xactimate. So many companies like to mark their estimates complete so that they fall to the bottom of your projects tab. So let me take you here into Xactimate. We're at the control center dashboard. This is where it always brings you when you first log in. And I'm in the desktop version. So those of you who are on the online version, uh, you might not see some of these windows, but that's because I'm in the uh, desktop version here. If you go to the top of your screen, you'll see a main tab that says projects. So I'm gonna click there. And this is the full history of projects that I've created here on my desktop version. Now, you do have options here for different columns. So you'll see I have project, I have insured, profile, so on. The column that we were going to be ordering our project list by is status. So if you look at the column header here, it says status, you can see in progress. If you don't see status, by the way, you can right click and you do have other columns that you can show. You can show all or just a few, depending on how you want to order this list. But status is what we're going to be focusing on for today. So if I click this column header that says status, you can see that everything that's in progress is showing up. Everything that's completed is at the end of the list here. For this example, I only have three completed projects, so everything else is in in-progress status, and that makes it quite messy because most of these jobs are complete. Most of these estimates have already been sent out and paid, so there's no reason for me to really leave them in progress. So to mark an estimate as completed, we are going to go and open up an estimate. Now you can start a new estimate if you'd like, or just pull up one that you're currently working on. I've got one here that I'm going to show you. And you're going to go over to the complete tab in the estimate, complete. In the complete tab, it'll ask you to submit required information. You may also see mark as complete here, and that would be really easy. You just go in there and click that hyperlink and it would mark it complete like that. But today I have to submit required information. So let's take a look at what it's asking me. It's saying my claim rep is empty, I've got some dates that are missing, so on and so forth. So I can go through here and just fill out all this missing information that it wants. Date contacted, I can fill all of these out. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I don't usually fill out the dates on an estimate, and therefore I could not mark it complete if I don't fill out the dates. So if that's something you want to get in the habit of doing whenever you start an estimate, just go ahead and fill out those dates. You won't have to go through this inspection wizard that we're doing right now. But that's just a side note. Uh, claim number, I usually have one of those filled out, but this is kind of a dummy estimate, so I don't have one. Now I've got everything filled out and you've got these nice green check boxes. Just some extra office administration stuff that needed to be taken care of, no big deal. And now we should be able to mark this estimate complete. This screen that I'm in right here is called the inspection wizard and it will catch errors for you, such as if you had zero quantities on your estimate or maybe you had painted over a wall on your estimate that you had also added wallpaper to, it'll catch those kinds of errors as well as the ones that you saw today on my screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish here. When I do that, you can see that it no longer says submit required information. It now says change estimate status to completed. So I'm going to click there. And what that's going to do is mark it as complete and also mark it read only. So I can no longer make changes to this estimate, which is another reason you might want to mark your estimates that you're done with as complete. So if I go over to estimate items, you can see I can no longer make changes to my quick entry screen. It's all grayed out. There's nothing I can do here to make any changes to the estimate. It is shut down or in read only mode. If you ever needed to go back and mark the estimate status to in progress, we could do that and that will unlock the estimate and we can make changes. The nice thing about complete is that no one can go in there and accidentally make changes once it's been completed and the work has been done, invoice has been paid, all of that. So that's why it's a nice safeguard uh, to mark your estimates complete as well as using this organizational system I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit the estimate. 
You'll see here on my projects tab, now I've got this estimate that I was working on. It's marked uh, completed here. And it will fall to the bottom of my projects list. So if we go back out to all projects, and I go ahead and order this projects list by status by clicking on the header, you'll see that that estimate that I was working on is right here. So it has been marked complete. It now falls to the end of the list and I never have to look at it again. So what a lot of companies who use this system, what their project screen looks like, they'll have maybe 10 to 20 in progress here on their screen, but they're completed start about right here. And everything else is completed. It's done. They know they don't have to go back and look at those jobs. However, if they ever need to, they can go find whatever they need and open it up mark it back to in progress and make those changes. So that's a great way of organizing your estimates if you don't want to look at your old information. The other thing I've seen people do is use these labels. So I'm not sure if you saw on my screen. Let me just pull some up. Yes, yeah, so I've got some labels here. There's a label column. Whenever you create an estimate here in the projects tab, it will ask you if you'd like to assign a label. So you've got all these different colors and this is the way to keep super organized. So those that use labels assign an action to every single color. So green means go, the scope has not been created, we have not done any work on this, it's a brand new file. Blue might be, you know, we've scoped the last, but we haven't written the estimate yet. Purple might be, you know, it's in progress, it's out there, the adjuster has seen our estimate, what have you, but we haven't received final invoice, final depreciation, or any of that. Red usually means stop work on the file, this needs to be marked complete. I've also seen these colors be assigned to different types of losses, so if you're a mitigation company, blue might be water, brown might be smoke, it's just depending on how you want to use that in that direction if you have multiple different types of losses. Same with restoration companies, they'll do the same thing. Green could be mold. I mean, get real creative with this labeling system. So you don't have access to the labels when you're out in your control center dashboard. If I add a new project here, you'll notice there is no labels or labeling options if you add a project here. You do have to add the project in the projects tab in order to have access to the labels. If you add a project in the Control Center dashboard, if you forgot, because you're not used to adding it in the project section, that's okay. Here, whenever you create the estimate and have it on the recent projects list, you can right click, go to Info, Rename, and that will allow you to assign the label here and you can change that status. So that is a way to go back and relabel all of your projects. If you want to do that right now and go into each project and determine what status was and label it, you could do that right at this point after the project has been formed. I hope that helps you with some of the thoughts on how you can organize your projects, your projects list, and then show what status your projects are in. My name is Alina Wilson with XM8 Mastery. If you like this video, please like below and share with your friends. Also, if you hit the subscribe button, you can have the weekly updates. Whenever we update our tips, you will get those in your feed. So be sure to subscribe as well. If you'd like more information on XM8 Mastery and what we do, please visit www.xm8mastery.com, and I will see you next week.